Cool Beans, I'm live on Facebook. Hello, hello, happy Father's Day for all you fathers out there. My name is Noodley Panda. And I want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day. I am a father to a comet goldfish by the name of Fischl. He's my baby boy. And I just want to say... He is my pride and joy. But how's everybody doing? Leave a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Nothing planned going on today. Nothing special. If you want to get your dad uh, something special for Father's Day, I recommend getting something from my cousin, Little Bear Forge. He is a blacksmith who makes knives and daggers and things of that nature. He is a blacksmith. I do recommend getting a blade from him. They're not cheap, but they're custom-made knives and they're high quality. So do give him a check out on Facebook. Anyway, happy Father's Day to you, Robert Rhodes, my cousin who runs Little Bear Forge. He is a father, and he's an adoptive father of many children. He's doing a great job raising kids, doing a better job than I was raised by my mother, who allowed my oldest brother, who I disowned, to torment me growing up. And she just enabled the abuse. But I'm not going to dive into that in this video. Not too deep. From when I was about 15 to 18 years old, I was able to live with my dad. And I was able to live with him in Arizona in Globe, which was a very small town in Arizona next to the Apache Reservation, San Carlos. And I've had a lot of good friends and good memories there. I really enjoyed my time in Arizona. I, I prefer Arizona over being here in Alabama, but that's because I have good memories of Arizona. My dad's also forked over the money for my hubby's antibiotic, which costs $200 a month. And it's an IV antibiotic. It's a continuous IV. It's um, ampicillin. That stuff does not have a long shelf life. It's like three days in the fridge, max. It's kind of stressful to deal with, but we're managing. Overall, everything's going fine. My computer died not too long ago, so I got to get a fan for this laptop that I'm using now. I got to get a a fan platform for it, or whatever it's called. I forget. I need to go on Amazon before I forget that. There we go. I added one. <laughs> I added one to my Amazon Prime shopping list. I build shopping carts, and when I get money in for it, I admit, put the shopping cart through its shipping. Ugh. Fun stuff. Still have no working dryer. We're going to work on that. We're going to try to fix what we have, and if we can't, we're going to try to scrounge up the money to buy a new one and get rid of the old one. We're not sure how that's going to work, but we're going to figure that out. It costs more to repair the old dryer through a um, repairman than it is to buy a new dryer and replace the old one. 
so it's more economical just to replace the old thing than it is to buy a new one. And as people know and remember with me, I am a caregiver. Uh, so if I go AFK, I will be back. So just expect that. I do have a setup on this system. So if I go AFK, you'll see this image. So it's not going to be like a static picture of a red panda or anything like that, like I've used before. I do intend to have more streams on Facebook where I sit down and vlog while I'm drinking beer, but I can't afford beer all the time, so there's that. I also uh, have to deal with drug tests now, so I can't smoke CBD rolls anymore. Even though CBD products are completely legal because they're just hemp due to the farm bill. Unfortunately, my PCP says that they can't determine the difference in a drug test between the legal CBD THC, the low THC CBD or hemp stuff, versus the illegal marijuana. So they say they have to assume that it's the illegal marijuana and I have to have gabapentin because my kidney disease has destroyed the nerves in my feet, so I have neuropathy. And it's pretty bad. So I need gabapentin to help alleviate the pain of the neuropathy. And in order to get that, I have to be drug tested. I was getting it through my podiatrist, but the podiatrist that I was seeing no longer works at the podiatry clinic, so now it's a different doctor. And he doesn't do long-term gabapentin treatment, only short-term. So I have to go through my primary care physician or PCP now, and they drug test for it because the gabapentin is a controlled substance. And the reason it's a controlled substance is because pill poppers and dope addicts will pop a bunch of pills and try to get high off of it, and just because of that politicians are like oh let's make it control substance and sometimes they'll even go as far as to make it illegal like kratom like out of state i can get kratom like if i go to uh, louisiana mississippi or tennessee or something like that i can get kratom but in alabama nope and kratom is supposed to be really good for arthritic pain i just can't get it here and it's sad because i have arthritis in my back and here's the problem when I was, before I was diagnosed with kidney disease, I was getting a medication called diclofenac. And that's an NSAID based on the ibuprofen side of the family. And that worked wonderfully for both my knees and my back. And I was able to get up and go. That was no problem. But now I'm taking just Tylenol and it's not nearly as good as what diclofenac was. And they can't give me an opioid that's worth a damn. And I don't want to be on an opioid because that crap's addictive. So I don't want to be a strung out freaking opioid addict. That's the last thing I'd want to be. So on top of that, I can't take opioids anyway because my antipsychotic is Libolvi, which has an anti-opioid in it to help combat weight gain. So I'm screwed in that department. So I can't take NSAIDs like ibuprofen. I can't take diclofenac. I can't take uh, some uh, Celebrex. And a whole slew of medications are just completely off of the table for me. So pain management is really not on the table for me for the most part. The only thing that I can get for injections is for my knees. And the knee injections are a little painful, but not as painful as they look. And speaking of knee injections, I need to re-upload that video. Because I a couple days ago, I went psychotic. And I ended up deleting all the videos off of my YouTube channel. Including my live streams and all my shorts. And 
That's what happens. It happens. Unfortunately. I'm not going to dive into the drama that happened because of that, but... Shit happens. Oh well. No big deal. No loss. Lost some friends, but they weren't friends to begin with, apparently. Bunch of fucking hypocrites. And they used me for Nitro on a uh, Nitro boost on their Discord server, and they just booted me out of the fucking server. Oh well, they don't get it next month. Their loss. <sighs> I have another friend that's uh, an experienced. Uh, well, he's got experience in a lot of things, and I'm just gonna boost his server instead. I think he'd actually have a greater appreciation for the server boost. Yeah, I'll need to upload this new injection video. I'm going to go ahead and download it. My network at home is better because by a new router, that's turning peachy. Okay, and I have to go AFK, so we'll be back.
and we're back. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. <sighs> Gotta take care of the hubby. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, knee injections. Um, I get the knee injections because those last me anywhere between six to eight months and I can get them every six months as needed. So that's really helpful. And unfortunately I can't do it with the back, my spine, even though I have an arthritic spine as well. So, Unfortunately, I'm stuck with taking Tylenol for back pain, which unfortunately doesn't help very much. Well, I guess it is what it is. There isn't much I can do. Now, when I was using CBD products, CBD helped out with the back pain tremendously. It's like I didn't need to have any other medication other than the CBD, and I didn't even have to get high. I just had to have just enough to where the pain would ease up. And it would, just a couple of puffs, really, off of the CBD vape, and my back pain would, after a couple of minutes, go away. Like, the edge would go be taken off after a couple of minutes, and then a few more minutes after that, my pain would be pretty much gone. And I'd be up, but about, and just kind of going hunky-go-dory, you know? So... That's kind of shitty, because the CBD didn't do anything for the neuropathy, but it did work wonders for the arthritic pain. So now I don't have that option, and I have to stop using the CBD products in order to get relief from neuropathy, so I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> so I have to choose between back pain relief or neuropathy relief and I'm choosing neuropathy because the back pain I can just take a little Tylenol neuropathy doesn't get touched by Tylenol and ibuprofen doesn't touch it either diclofenac didn't touch it Celebrex didn't touch it now gabapentin and Lyrica touched it gabapentin worked better than Lyrica So, I mean, I can get some, I can get, to, I can get the edge taken off of my back pain with Tylenol. But that's about the most that I can get done, is get the edge taken off. I can't get pain-free, which just kind of sucks, but it is what it is, I guess. Just gotta deal with it. It's just kind of shitty that... I can't make some sort of compromise on account that I have kidney disease and I don't have many other fucking options. I have to deal with this unfair treatment because everybody else that have healthy kidneys can get diclofenac for their arthritic problems, for their bad backs, and they can and take that medication and jump up and down for joy and I'm over here and I'm not able to get it prescribed because they're not willing to risk it. Because their excuse is, oh, what if I just, if I prescribe that and you get uh, turned for the worse and that falls back down on me? And I'm like, yeah, but here's the thing. I'm taking liver killing amounts of Tylenol, you know? I mean, Tylenol is not good for the liver either. Either way, I mean, I'm rude. I'm either killing my kidneys or I'm killing my liver. One of the two is happening. Or you can just let me have my CBD products and give me the gabapentin and then I'm 
not killing my kidney or my liver, but this is like they don't care <laughs> because they're gung ho on getting that drug test. And they're gung ho about me passing it too. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. I'm still hanging up clothes in order to dry them. I got underwear and socks hanging up over here on the wall and on the closet door, just outside of the view of the camera. All because I don't have a clothes dryer that works anymore. I mean, it, it works, quote unquote, but it doesn't heat. And it's probably the heating element that's bad. We're not sure. But we're going to take it apart probably tomorrow and figure that out. It's one of those deals, you know, when you're broke as hell, you got to deal with what you have and make do with what you have. Because you can't necessarily just go to the hardware store or the appliance store and pick up a new a new washer and dryer at the drop of a hat and pay to have the old stuff disposed of and brought away. It's hard. It's financially difficult. And there's a lot of stuff that's going on. It's like things just break down and nothing gets better, but I'm trying. Got to get a laptop cooling fan or a pad for this laptop because it doesn't have adequate cooling. The hardware on this laptop is actually better than the old one that I was using. It's just its fan, its air, its uh, air supply isn't as good as the old one. So the old MSI laptop that I was using had uh, airflow like gangbusters. This new one that I'm using is a much newer model laptop with better hardware, like a better graphics processor or video card, a uh, better newer gen of i7 processor, Intel i7 processor. And in all honesty, this laptop is, it kicks ass. The problem is it doesn't have adequate airflow. So I got to get a cooling pad for it. Anyway, I have to go AFK here again. Caregiver duties.
And we're back. <laughs> oh, as I was saying, this laptop's cooling sucks. It's able to run uh, games and software that the MSI laptop, the previous laptop that died, is able to run software that it's not able to in better, more newer gen games. Allegedly. Like, it's graphics process, video card, and it's uh, uh, CPU is much newer than the MSI by four years. Unfortunately, as I was saying, its fans suck. Not in a good way. It, it, it's terrible. It's... Um, it, it needs a it needs a cooling pad, so I added a cooling pad on Amazon for about twenty bucks. So I'll see what I can do about that when I get the finances for that, and I'll be able to properly play games again. I also ended up needing to get a new water bottle, so I got a Hawaiian punch. Now that's one new water bottle. Always carry a gallon of water nearby. My hubby helps me drink the Hawaiian punch. It was the white one, the pina colada. <laughs> we enjoy it. Yeah, it's not a lot going on today. Just taking care of my hubby and just doing things that need to be done. Vlogging here and there. Might try to see if my computer will handle Diablo 2 Resurrected and nostalgia trip over that a little bit. But other than that, probably not going to do too much. Probably going to make some rice and some Japanese curry for dinner tonight. It's either that or sloppy joes, but most likely going to do curry. really like making curry. Curry is awesome. Anyway... From what I understand about what my dad's doing today, he's going to church. And then he's going to probably go to some relative place, I'm not sure. But I told my dad Happy Father's Day. I wanted to make sure I told him that. Anywho... I've run out of things to talk about for the most part, so. I was going to do a series on my YouTube channel called Something Scary. And I was going to talk about various subjects uh, about the things that are scary, like the Tiki and the dead internet theory and the Roko's Basilisk and things like that, but. In all honesty, I don't know if this laptop can currently handle editing videos. I'm a little reluctant to try because I know if I play Deus Ex Mankind Divided, like before I could even get past the opening scene with uh, Jensen on the train, before the terrorist attack at the train depot, that the laptop overheats and shuts itself off. It suspends itself. And that's why I'm saying this laptop does not have adequate cooling. Because it can run uh, all sorts of games and all sorts of software. And it, it's supposed to be able to run at higher resolutions and better graphics and stuff than the MSI that I just can't do it because it doesn't have adequate airflow. 
Like, it's not due to, like, being up against the wall or anything. It's, like, three feet of... Well, two and a half feet of space against the... From the back wall. And about... I would say three and a half, four inches to the left. So, it's got adequate uh, space between walls. And desks. So, there's not, like, me blocking it with anything like a wall. It just doesn't have adequate airflow. So hopefully that cooling fan that I buy later will actually be beneficial for it. And I'll decide later if I'm going to continue the Something Scary series. Right now it's up in the air if I'm going to do it or not. All right, now it's currently leaning on no. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. I'll see you in the next vlog. Be sure to, if you're viewing this on YouTube, to leave me a comment below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe.